and we thank God for them and we're going to praise God and pray that the Lord will keep them and watch over them yes. as they're on their vacation and we thank God uh, for you all that have come to be in the house of the Lord and those that are tuning in with us even on our, our Facebook live uh, broadcast and we praise God for our first lady, Lady Tracy Queen. Amen. We praise God for her. Amen. We thank and praise God for all of our ministers in their absence. And we thank God for you, Mother Davis, in her absence. And we praise God for even our media team up there doing a great job. Praise God for them and our ushers that are roaming around. We praise God for each and every one of you. Amen. And we thank God for each and every one that has come to be with us, even on this day. And we praise God, even for my, my, my sister, my brother-in-law, they're all the way from North Carolina. Amen. Amen. Come on, give God a praise for them. Amen. We thank God for Sister Beverly. We thank God for her being with us tonight today. Amen. Truly, God is good. We praise God for our deacons, deacons kids, and deacons Daniels. Amen. And we certainly do have a lot to, to pray for. I see Sister Cora back in our midst. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Give God glory. Give God praise. Amen. So as we get ready to go before the Lord in prayer, prayer is essential for each and every one of us. How many of you know that prayer is essential? Amen. Yeah. Yes, prayer is essential. The Bible tells us for to make our requests known unto the Lord. And through Jesus Christ, we can come boldly to the throne of grace that we might obtain mercy and find grace to help us in our time of need. And when I found out walking with the Lord, even though you may feel good, even though you may uh, be uh, in a good place in your life, you're always in a time of need. There's always a time of need. And, and, and it's always good for us to make our request known unto the Lord. Amen? Thank you, Lord. And so then, when we make our request known unto the Lord, we can find grace. We can find help in our time of trouble. Amen. And I thank God because He is a God that is able to deliver us. He's a God that's able to keep us. How many of you know He's keeping us? He's watching over us. Is He watching over Sister Chris? Amen. He's keeping us and watching over us. And we praise God for that. Amen. So if you have a particular prayer request, certainly we want to uh, pray for those that are, are going through the struggles and various ups and hills and valleys. And uh, pray for those that are suffering through uh, those hurricanes and those the bad weather that we've experienced over this past week. And we certainly want to praise God for that. Amen. And we certainly um, want you to pray. Uh, for the service on today, that something be said and done to encourage us to inspire our hearts. Amen? That, that the Lord will save and add to the church daily such as should be saved. Thank you, Lord. I'm excited about the Lord. How many of you are excited about Him? How many of you love the Lord? Yes, love the Lord because He first loved us. He set His affection upon us. He called us. Amen. He set programs, and when I say programs, I mean that he set a plan in place for us to be delivered, for us to be set free for the foundation of the world. And we thank him, and we praise him. All right, any other prayer request? If you have a prayer request, you can stand down and let it be known. Sister Yolanda. Jesus, 
Lord, we certainly thank you and praise you for your grace and your mercy and your love and your kindness. We thank you, Lord, for waking us up this morning and starting us on our way. We thank you for the worship that we uh, have here on today, that we've worshipped you so far. And we thank you, Lord, for being good to each and every one of us, to being a good, good father. We, we thank you. We thank you for your mercy. We thank you for your love and your kindness. We thank you, Lord, that you have called us and chosen us and, and delivered us and set us free. We thank you, Lord, for being good to each and every one of us. We thank you for every test and every trial and every tribulation that we may experience in our lives because we realize that all things work together. All things work together for good to them that love you, uh, to them that are called according to your purpose. And we thank you, Lord, that you called us and that you delivered us and that you helped us even unto this very hour. We ask you, Lord, that you look upon each and every request that's been made known. That you, every request, Lord, that we bring before you. You said in your word, come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and you will give us rest. You told us, Lord, to cast all of our cares upon you. And hallelujah, and because you care for us. We ask you, Lord, that as we cast all of our cares upon you, as we make our request known to you, we ask you, Lord, that you remember men and women and children everywhere. Lord, that you save and add to the church daily, such as should be saved. We ask you, Lord, that you remember this great nation and remember those that are going through. Remember those, Lord, that are, that are suffering pain, those that are struggling in their bodies, those that are dealing with addiction and oppression, Lord. In the name of Jesus, we ask you, Lord, that you send forth your healing power, and your healing deliverance. In the name of Jesus, we ask you, Lord, that you destroy every yoke that you break down every stronghold. Lord. We stand on your promises. We stand on your word, Lord. We declare and decree in the name of Jesus that, that Lord, we are set free by your power. That we come up with your blood. We ask you, Lord, that you put wash us, that you cleanse us from all evil and all sin, that, that you cleanse us, Lord, from every iniquity, in the name of Jesus, that we may worship you in spirit and in truth, that we may call on your name, that you may heal us, and, and that you might set us free, and glory, in the name of Jesus, we ask you, Lord, that you bless each and every request, uh, bless the name of God, bless our families, bless, bless even the work of our hands, Lord. Strength that you are a sheep. 
to know you get more than a prize. You we belong. Oh, 
Put your stand up so people can see you.
thank God for each and every one of you. And the precious away, come on out. So it's blessing time. It's blessing time in the sanctuary. It's blessing time in the sanctuary. Amen. It's time for us to give unto the Lord. And as the scripture says, not the scripture, as the psalm says, as we give unto the Lord, he will give us more to give. Amen. And we certainly thank God uh, for your tithes and your offerings. And we thank God for this opportunity to sow seed into the kingdom. Amen. It's important that we sow seed into the kingdom, that we bring our tithes and our offerings to the storehouse, the Bible says, so that it can be meet in the house of the Lord. And we certainly don't want to turn our tithes into offerings because they will change the purpose and the intent and the blessing. You want to make your tithes your tithes and your offering your offering. And the Bible says that we ought to be a cheerful giver. Doesn't he say that? Amen. So he says, don't give grudgingly, don't give sparingly. And if you give so sparingly, you'll reap sparingly. If you so bountifully, you'll reap bountifully. Thank God. I just remembered as well, um, uh, we had gotten a call, uh, you know, if you watch the news, Haiti is uh, going through an uh, earthquake over there in mass devastation in, uh, in Pentecostal churches, uh, the Apostolic Faith Incorporated has uh, pastors and churches over there, so uh, we've been asked to to make a donation uh, to them to that relief effort. So, um, uh, Christian ministries will be uh, sending a uh, love offering over. And uh, if you want to contribute to that love offering, just see Sister Yolanda uh, to help those that need relief. And we certainly do praise God. Uh, I told you the chair lady of that department, our global missions, uh, Pastor D. Marilyn Abbas. Uh, that we would make that announcement. And uh, thank God that he brought it back to my remembrance. And we praise God for his greatness and his goodness that he has shown toward us. And uh, I was telling our, 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 our Sunday school class in the beginning, uh, right before prayer, uh, I thank God that you know, uh, there was a foot storm over here in uh, New York, and there was one over there. Jersey and Philadelphia got hit pretty hard. And I just thank God that, you know, that He spared us, spared us, and that we don't uh, suffer such things as that. And that's just the goodness of the Lord. Amen? It's just the goodness of the Lord. I'm going to be honest with you. If I lived in Florida and, and all those places where that kind of stuff was happening, I thought we'd move. <laughs> you know, I wouldn't be looking at rebuilding. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Just to, just to the same place. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. So, but as, as the song says, the safest place in the whole wide world is where? Y'all don't know? Y'all know? <laughs> oh, <man. laughs> okay. All right. Well, we want to ask the church to stand. As you get your offering in your hand, I believe that this is the Sunday school. Gracious Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you and praise you for your greatness and your mercy, your love and your kindness. We thank you, Lord, for this ability to sow seed into the kingdom, that there may be a blessing in storehouses in the kingdom of God. We ask you that you bless each and every soul that is about to sow, sow seed into this good ground. Bless them 30, 60, 100 fold in the name of Jesus. And Lord, we pray that you use this offering to your glory, to the building of the kingdom. Father, we give you glory and honor and praise in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. All right, we're going to turn you over to the hands of our, of our precious.
we certainly thank God for your liberal giving. We thank God for your ability to give and to sow seed into the kingdom. Uh, we won't keep you long this morning, but we certainly do have a word from the Lord. And I want you to stand with me um, as we go to the book of St. Matthew, uh, Matthew chapter number 20. Matthew chapter number 20. to them to for whom 
it is prepared of my Father. Prepared seating in the kingdom. Prepared seating in the kingdom. You know, this particular question or this particular statement by the mother of John and the mother of the children of Zebedee is not the first time that this particular question came up about being great in the kingdom, about having seen in the kingdom. Oftentimes, it came up, I read in my study, at least three times this question came up, and each time that the question came up about who can be great in his kingdom, there was a quarrel, there was an argument by those apostles or those other followers of Jesus. You see, oftentimes people look for specific endowments of positions and with those positions there comes a level of responsibility there comes a level of responsibility oftentimes people want titles and not the responsibility and the lord with the lord it is not so it is not so so we see here then in our lesson text uh, jesus is being confronted by the mother uh, of Zebedee's children, sons. They came to Jesus worshiping him, came to him worshiping him, and desiring a certain thing of him. And that word desiring really translates into she was demanding. She was demanding of Jesus a position for her sons, that one should sit on the left hand and that the other should sit on the right hand. And as she begins to ask and inquire, Jesus, in turn, as we have read in the scriptures, said to her, you don't know really what you're asking. In other words, he said to her that if you're want to walk with me, if you're going to live with me, if you're going to rule with me, you've got to be willing to pay the price. You've got to be willing to pay the price. And he asked her a question. He said, are you able to drink of the cup that I drink of? Are you able to be baptized with the baptism that I've been baptized with? In other words, Jesus was saying that, that if you're willing to suffer with me, then you can reign with me. We have to understand that, that oftentimes uh, responsibility and leadership is, is, is not pretty. Oftentimes suffering and leadership, uh, it gets ugly at times. And with the Lord, it's a hands-on type of thing. It's not sitting in an ivory tower uh, commanding and, and it's not sitting in a place where one can uh, demand. It's a place of, of, of leadership. It's a place of servitude. And that's what Jesus was letting them know that, 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 that leadership with him is a place of servitude. He was asking her, are your sons ready to serve? Not just to serve until things uh, go wrong, but are you willing to be faithful unto death? Are you willing to be faithful unto death? We see here that, I told you earlier that there was another uh, encounter that Jesus had with his disciples, and he was about to uh, uh, have his last communion with them, and he told them that he was going to die and to suffer. And to again be raised up on the third day. And as that communion service was going on, Jesus said to them, I desire 
to have this communion with you. I desire to have this communion with you. And as he begins to uh, have the Passover with them and to begin to celebrate uh, a new beginning, they, they were quarreling among themselves. They were quarreling among themselves. And then when Jesus asked them about their quarreling, the, the question came up. They said that we were quarreling about who would be great in thy kingdom. We were, Jesus was letting them know that I'm about to die. I'm about to give my life as a ransom. And his disciples were quarreling about, no doubt, his position. Who would take his place? Who would stand in his stead? They didn't really realize that, that, that when Jesus was talking to them about uh, the Passover, about the, the Passover, it represented a, a new transition. If you go back to the original Passover, the original Passover, Moses was there with the children of Israel and he told Pharaoh to let my people go, to let my people go. And, and he said, let them go so that they may worship and serve me in the wilderness. You see, when, when, when Christ frees us, he frees us so that we may serve our Father. He frees us so that we might worship him in spirit and in truth. The freedom of Christ is to serve and to worship him. Uh, that's what he was trying to show to his disciples that, that, that freedom with Christ means to worship and to serve me. Jesus told them that you've got to look at me as your example. You've got to look at me your, as your example because if we read in the scriptures, the Bible says that the Spirit of the Lord was upon Christ and, and he was anointed, the Bible says, to to heal the broken heart. He was anointed to preach deliverance to the captive. He was anointed to set the captive free. He was anointed to serve. And, and when we realize that Jesus told his disciples that, that, that I will no longer have this communion with you in this place until we get to the kingdom, until we get to the place of the new kingdom. And when Jesus was telling them was that 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 soon after my resurrection the, the new kingdom will be established and where I'm going to give you a great commission and that and that great commission would be for you to go out into all the worlds and to preach this gospel and to lay hands on the sick and to bind the enemy and to preach deliverance and to the those that are captive, those that need to set free and then he let them know that, that, that the kingdom would come uh, on the day of Pentecost when the spirit of the Lord would descend from heaven and, and when the Holy Ghost came it gave them power. He said he shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost or the Holy Spirit has come upon you and uh, with that power he told them that you shall be witnesses of me in Jerusalem and Judea and Samaria and like the other most parts of the world. You see, when you're serving Christ, you, you've got to prepare yourself to be a witness. You, you've got to prepare yourself to let your light shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. You, you see, Paul got the concept. He realized that he said, I'm crucified with Christ and Nevertheless, I live, but yet not I, but Christ did in me. And the life that I now live in this flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God, who, who died for me and gave his life for me. That, you know, when you're going to be the servant of Christ, you, you've got to be willing to lay down your life. You, you've got to be able to pick up your cross and, and follow after Jesus. And, and to be able to follow after Jesus, that, that means you're going to go through some hills. That, that means you're going to go through some valleys. You're going to have some ups and you're going to have some downs. But you've got to realize that greater is he that is in me uh, than he that is in the world. You've got to realize that you are not in uh, to this. That you are not in for whatever comes your way. Because if God be for you, who is it? 
service. That means that you've got to be willing to serve your brother or your sister. That means that you've got to be willing to literally lay down your life. Oh, that you've got to be willing to look to those that are weak. Look to those that are out of the way. You see, sometimes we want to please those that are in position.
say, so take courage. Because I'm strong. I'm mighty. Oh, God, I'm mighty. Big power. Come on, clap your hands. And give God a praise. Oh, God, I feel it in here. This is sometimes you may go through sickness. Sometimes you may go through conditions. But you've got to live to the here. Let's 
the Lord will say to you, Well done. Thy good and what? Faithful servant. That word faithful servant means that I can trust you in any circumstance. I can trust you in any situation. I can trust you. Amen? Amen. I ain't got to ask, I ain't got to, women ain't got to ask this question, answer this question, because I already know the answer. What thing they want from a man is faithfulness. Am I right? Yeah. All right, y'all look at me like I said. I know I'm right. Women want faithful men. Amen? Yeah. Now, conversely, men want faithful women.
Things in heaven, things in earth. That what? Jesus Christ is what? Is he Lord? Is he Lord? Is he Lord of your life? So then if he's Lord of your life, you'll do the things that he said. Amen? Amen. Uh, come on, give the Lord a praise. Oh, Jesus, I can go over my time. Hallelujah, I enjoy this message. <laughs> Hallelujah. Let the people of God stand. I give myself away. Lord, I want you to use me. Tell somebody, Lord, I want you to use me. Lord, I want you to use me. Those that are here today that have not given their life up to Christ, amen, you have an opportunity to do that as, as you see, as you will. God is good. God is great. God is worthy to be praised. Those of you that are here today that desire prayer, you can come at this time and we will pray for you. And that the Lord will bless you, strengthen you with all power and Hallelujah. Thank God. Thank God. Amen. If you want to, Pastor Stewart and she was, I'm going to anoint my brother and I'm going to pray for him. I want you to come and pray as well. That the Lord bless us. God bless everyone. Thank you, Jesus. I just want to encourage each and every one of the goodness of the Lord, the faithfulness of God, how much He loves each and every one of you. You are so precious in the sight of the Lord. He loved you so much. He woke you up this morning with his love and with his grace and with his love and kindness. The mercies of God will overtake you as you decree the victories of the Lord. As you hold on to the horns of the altar, keep your faith. Don't let the nothing of nobody turn you around. God is a good God. Jesus is Savior. He's Lord and King of the earth. And He loves each and every one of us. He calls us to come closer. Seek Him while He may be found. Love Him while He overshadows, while He overtakes, while He holds you close to Him. Just say yes. Yes to the Lord. Yes. Yes, Lord. I love you so much. I'm nothing without you. I can't do anything without you. You're King of Kings, Lord of Lords. You're my Savior, my Deliverer. You keep my mind. You keep me in perfect peace as I seek your name and seek your name. Thank you for loving me. Thank you for changing me. Thank you for turning it around. Thank you for taking care of my family. My children, say you just pray, children, pray, pray. Lord, you're a king, you are waiting. Thank you for your healing touch. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I love you, Lord God. I adore you, Lord God. I teach you every day. I don't know which way to trust. I don't know what to do. But all of my trust, my whole heart is in you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord God. For this beautiful day, for this blessed day, for my heart being changed, for loving me, Lord God. In the mighty name of Jesus, each and every one, hold on to you. Hold on. I can't get away from 
what I've been teaching and trying to get out to give you. But I just want to testify before I get in pray and dismiss how the Lord took care of me on last week. I had to take the great grand boys back home. And I had to wind up doing ministry as I was there and helping because things was out of order. I don't like order. He liked dedication. You can't just walk in one situation and say, oh, that don't look good. I got to get dirty. Just that's the same. Sometimes you're going to have to go into some dirt. Sometimes you're going to have to help the person that you know if DCF came in and they take the children away and put them in jail. Sometimes you're going to have to set your purse down and start clean, start sweeping. Thank you. 
Abundant, everything. 